tuning in to this episode of Cleared Cast, your Security Clearance Careers podcast. I'm Katie Keller, Editorial Communications Manager with Clearance Jobs. And I'm Jill Hamilton, uh, your editor at the news site at Clearance Jobs. Great. And I'm really excited about our topic about our topic today. I think you all are really going to enjoy it. It's about filling out the SF-86, one of the most daunting forms if you're entering a security clearance career. Uh, it's long. It takes a lot of time. It's bulky. Um, so we're going to talk through some tips today, which I'm really excited about. So Jill, why don't you kick us off with one of your top tips? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, after sitting down for a full day of doing taxes, um, one of these previous Saturdays, I was I, this was definitely on my mind. I thought it was a six-hour stint in TurboTax, and I thought, oh my goodness, <laughs> things like this just take a lot of time, and they they not just in the moment, but you know, all the time leading up to it. So it's definitely important to look into it. So my first one uh, as a program manager myself, and uh, is really to program manage your SF-86. Uh, it works best if you have a go in with a game plan. Um, I think winging it is great for some people, and there are moments in your life that call for winging it, but this is not one, this is not the time you want to shoot from the hip and <laughs> see where the chips <laughs> land, you know. You really want to plan out all the different things. You can actually look through the form ahead of time online and you can plan exactly what you're going to need so that when you do sit down, that you have um, a plan of action in place. So it's just going to be a lot less stressful if you start, begin with the end in mind, to quote Steve Covey, Stephen Covey. Sure. <laughs> so what do you got? Well, that brings us uh, to our second tip, which is do your homework, um, do that research, take a look at the form online, everyone has access to it, um, take a look at the questions and make sure that, again, just do your research, I think that's really important. Uh, Sort of going along those lines, uh, you know, financial considerations is one of the biggest disqualifiers for security clearance applicants or for why they can't obtain a security clearance. So get your credit report. See if there are any inaccur inaccuracies there or anything that you sort of need to take care of. But that sort of all goes along the lines of doing that homework and doing that research. That's great. That's great. You know, it's, you can even check all your social media accounts too for dates and things like that to start planning out all the different things that you need. Um, so just know that that you got that in your back pocket to to check out. Um, so number three, though, uh, you definitely you can do this all in one sitting. I was reading uh, read one Reddit user did it in like six hours. <laughs> um, and which is basically what it took me to do my taxes. And so I know how I felt in that. And I felt a little bit squeamish about some things. I mean, I'm, it was all good. It was all fine what I did. But I just, it is a lot. And I was done for the rest of the day. So your best bet is to split it up into certain sections. And so that way you're rereading things, you're um, making sure everything is accurate. Because, you know, if you have addresses inputted incorrectly, or you have phone numbers that are just one digit off, you just happen to fat finger it in a little bit wrong. I mean, that does slow down everything, the whole process. So simple mistakes, you can um, make sure that you don't have those just by splitting it up, making it a less stressful process and planning it out um, with a little bit each day. So. Yeah. Well, and, uh, so when I was working for a contractor, you know, my FSO was hounding me about my SF-86. If you're a security clearance applicant, you're not going to have an FSO on your back, but I, you have to find that balance of uh, taking your time, filling out the form correctly, but also mm -hmm. not letting your emotion run amok because you do want that security clearance career so badly and you want it submitted so you can get the background investigation process, yeah. you know, kickstarted. So you really need to find that balance of, all right, take your time, be methodical, be thorough, um, just so, because in the end, doing it all correctly will have uh, you get that security clearance career um, quicker in the end, so. Right, right. Well, so uh, number four, um, the scope of the question matters. Uh, I know that uh, with a lot of the different questions, they're going to range from five years, seven years, 10 years ever. 
um, pay attention to what they're actually asking. Um, because again, that's another thing that can slow down the uh, investigation process. Uh, if you share a little bit too much or if you don't, uh, you know, share enough. Um, so yeah, being paying attention to those time periods is really important because they do change throughout the SF-86. Right, exactly. And uh, number five, comments on your friend. So if you happen to have something that you're like, that, I wish I could just use a, a little bit more uh, explanation. This is your space to do that. So if you, if, if you have a question that has comments, fill it in because the more information that you can give a background investigator so they can understand who you are and why you did what you did or the extenu any extenuating circumstances, it can kind of give them that bigger picture that they need in order to give you a favorable um, decision, which is what you're, which is what you're going after. I mean, they can't read your minds. Things are just, they're getting like all the, con all the, all the information just in black and white there and they have to make their own judgment from that. And so what they're trying to do is compete, fill out the whole picture. So make sure you use those comments um, whenever they're they're available to you, even if it's squeaky clean. You know, I think it can give them a little bit. Um, I mean, you don't have to overshare. <laughs> yeah, don't scare, <laughs> but uh, you can um, you can just kind of complete the picture a little bit for them. So, sure. What do you think, Katie? Well. Uh... Yeah, so one thing I will say, uh, just throughout the SF-86, but especially in the comments where it's sort of free form, just avoiding acronyms, um, you know, share that extra information. But if it's an acronym that, you know, a background investigator isn't going to understand and sort of scratch their head over, if it's, you know, some uh, field that they aren't necessarily involved with, just avoid acronyms, just spell it out, use those comments. Uh, mm -hmm. So number six, you know, goes along with comments as well. Um Using additional comments at the end, you know, to reiterate your intention to protect U.S. classified information. Uh, so if there are a few things on your form that you might, that you think might, you know, uh, prevent the background investigation process from running smoothly or being delayed, um, just use those comments at the end to sort of reiterate your intentions, um, which, yeah. you know, it's a great last opportunity to you know, talk about how much you love your country and classified information. So USA, <laughs> that's, that's your <laughs> shot to put it in there. Uh, number seven. I mean, you maybe should have chosen your friends wisely, but if you're at this point in your life where sometimes you can't choose your friends as wisely, at least choose your references wisely and then give them a heads up. Um, you can just give them a quick note that, hey, I put your name down on, under on my SF-86, so you might get a, um, a call. I've had that with some friends, and it's kind of giving me a heads up. So I make sure when I see a call that's from a different number that I don't know, I'm a little bit more likely to pick it up and not think it's somebody calling me about my home home warranty <laughs> or another warranty. telemarketing <laughs> car warranty. <yeah. laughs> They're relentless. <laughs> so I'll at least field the call for the sake of my friend or even just a reference or coworker. But um, you can even just map them out so you can understand who you're going to use for which section because there's ones that you can't duplicate and who can give the best, um, just a whole better picture about you. Um, I mean, you can't control what people are going to say, nor should you. But in the background, investigators not looking for that. But it doesn't take that long. When I've been called, it's usually like 10, 15 minutes. So I was able to take the call during one of my daughter's volleyball games on the sideline. They're very efficient. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's not a huge deal. You just need to make sure that you can, here again, use social media to kind of look through who maybe have, who lived around you at certain locations and that can help you plan that out, but still choose them wisely, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and paying attention to what sort of verifier they're looking for is really important. I mean, so if they're looking for someone who sort of has an interaction with you on a monthly basis, basis or a weekly basis, I, someone you've known for the last 20, 30 years, that's great. But if you only see them once a year, that's not necessarily the best reference. Um, paying attention to if they're looking for a supervisor and don't list a, you know, a subordinate. Um, but the other tip 
that I'd love to share with that one is being sure to list all of your family members. So listing out mm. all of those references can be really helpful because you may have half siblings, you may have stepchildren. Um, really think through all of those family members and ensure that you list all of those because again, it's just going to keep on delaying the process if you have any discrepancies or leave out uh, right. any information. Right. Um, or it can make you look bad too. Like, why didn't she list this one relative, Katie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what are you hiding? And it, sometimes it's just, you know, some, you, somebody slipped your mind and, or, you know, maybe you have a, you know, a, a stepfather you don't speak with anymore because your mother yeah. divorced him. Um, yeah. But yeah, you need to be sure to list all of those, which brings us to number eight, just keeping all of your documentation straight. Uh, it's a lot of information. It's a big form. You have a life. I, I, putting a human being's life from the last 10, you know, 15 years, uh, it's a lot of stuff. So just keeping your mm -hmm. documentation straight and organized um, will certainly help you in the end and uh, help you close that um, that application, uh, you know, with with confidence. Yeah, especially if you've moved around a lot, it's hard to keep the different dates straight. And if you get called back on things um, or different things get called into question, um, just having that all laid out in front of you, it's kind of like, it's you know, it's just like your taxes that so you keep. I, I mean, I do. I keep all the information together. Oh, sure. It's mildly organized. Let's let's not be let's not go crazy here. But um, so there's a, there, there's some order and uh, in a folder. But it's the same thing for your SF-86. So that just in case you, it's ever coming back to you or when it's um, it used to be, you know, for the reinvestigation process, you know, like to have that all still lined up. Um, it's always good to have that. All, to, all that information together. So agreed. You know, with my taxes, I have file. Well, I mean, with any of my, I call it the important file folder. And <laughs> where things are going to die. It's a big filing cabinet of my life, and it's important to yeah. stay organized. And like you're saying, just with the F SF eighty uh, six, it's important to stay organized and keep yourself straight. Yeah, yeah. So what do we got? Right, number nine. Number nine. Don't skip any sections. So. Here's the thing. So like, you know, when you're taking a test and you're like, if you don't know the answer right away, go ahead and skip it and make sure you come back to it. And I think just like when you're in school and you're on a test and you have, there's, you always run the risk of turning it in uh, with that section still skipped because you forgot to go back to it. So you're going to need to, if it's, if it's accidental, um, like that, you're just, you, you, you're coming along, you're like, I don't know that information right now. Let me go to the next section. Make sure you're documenting that and you're marking it so that you know exactly where you are in in the form um, so that you don't skip anything. But don't also th assume that that anything's optional because <laughs> it's not. <laughs> um, otherwise, they would say optional. <laughs> um, sure. But they if they're asking it, they want the information. So it's not up to you to be like, oh, I can just skip past that. Well, they don't need that. I can't figure that out. It's too hard to find, or I don't want to answer that, that kind of thing. So nothing on it is optional. So you do need to fill that out. But also just, I think the biggest thing is just to not forget it because um, it can be in a long, a long form that you're filling out, you can get lost in all the details. So that's really easy to do. So make sure you track where you are. So you're not skipping anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and on the flip side, if you're doing it electronically, you can't skip anything. And, but that brings on some other impl implications uh, in that if you don't know, uh, know a verifier or an answer to something at that moment, sometimes you'll put something wrong. So just, right. yeah, being methodical. Like placeholders. And, yeah, like placeholders. And that, uh, that can, you know, get a lot of people denied. So, um, you know, yeah. in whatever form you're doing it, just ensure that you know those rules and yeah. regulations. Maybe. Maybe use a placeholder that's super easy to you, like Joe Schmo, if it's like you're putting the name in, so that'll like glaringly stand out to you, all in caps, if you can. Like, and you're going back, you're like, oh, that that one I need to change. And Background Joe's investigators are like, where is this Joe Schmo I've been trying to get a hold of? Like, figment of my imagination. Uh, yeah. All right, what's our last, our our biggest one, I think? You say the oh, best yeah. for last, Katie. E yeah, very easy answer. Um, usually on my Ask CJ column every weekend, it's usually the moral of the story. Just don't lie. Just be honest. 
a lot of the time um, being honest is a mitigating factor in and of itself because background or adjudicators for that matter are looking at the whole person so just don't lie if you lie it looks like you're trying to hide something obviously um they're not gonna buy the excuse oh i just forgot you didn't forget <laughs> we know you remember um so yeah just be honest in the forums it is you know a government forum so being honest is the best policy when it comes to the sf86 <laughs> yeah because and here's the thing it's not just like you might lose the job or you might um just get not get your clearance like it's actually could result in jail time or fines depending upon sure. what they decide or what the lie is like um so not only would you get fired or like not get the job and denied the clearance but it just it ruins your chances down the road as well unless it's outside the scope of the years. So the five, like if it's something you lied about that was 10 years ago and it's a five-year question, you could get sure. back in that way. And, but don't lie. Yeah, <laughs> that, that'll don't that'll lie. solve that problem real fast if you could just not do that. So Liar, liar, <laughs> pants on fire. Well, and that brings, uh, you know, it's really interesting. I've seen a lot of these cases with folks that it's come to bite them in the behind later. Um, when mm -hmm. they're transitioning out of the military, but when a recruiter fills out your SF-86 for you, do not let them do that. S fill it out yourself, it, it, yeah. you know, be very, uh, not forceful, <laughs> sound crazy. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. but you know, a lot of the time recruiters just- Assertive. Like, yeah, be assertive because they'll try to, they want the process to go a lot quicker. So, you know, on Equip, they'll be, you know, filling out, asking them the questions. Just sit there, do it yourself, read the questions, you know, thoroughly. And I know a lot of folks coming out of the military when it comes up to a PR and um, mm -hmm. well, you know, continuous evaluation may change that shortly. But um, when it's come up to a PR and something has come up where they lied on the SF-86 and they, you know, swear up and down that they didn't, that a recruiter filled out their SF-86 and, you know, they kind of don't care. <laughs> you lied on your SF-86. Right. So you should have been filling it out. So that's another thing to think about when it comes right. to being honest. It's kind of like my mom did this for me kind of excuse. Yeah. Um, I wasn't responsible, but you do, there is a statement, you know, that you're like, I say everything is true and everything in right. this form is right, that you're affirming it. So even if someone else filled it out, it kind of takes that away from you and it took the control out of your hands. And so it's definitely one to um, maintain control. This is one, this is one area of your life. It's okay to be controlling. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe not some other, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Those are our top 10 tips for filling out your SF-86. Avoid some of those screw-ups that we discussed because eventually or ultimately it will delay you in obtaining your security clearance and a security clearance career and working in national security and being successful. So for more tips on filling out your SF-86 and other security clearance news, you can visit news.clearancejobs.com.